preparedness training helps you to understand if it's to be, it's up to me. Often, when there is an emergency, people wait around for somebody else to take action or rescue them. Well, let's talk about what you have control over and what you don't. So, I'm Mary Bourne. I'm a traditional naturopath. I love sharing natural remedies with people for better health. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years because they work. Here in Michigan, it is late September, and we understand that we're not going to see 80 and 90 degree weather until maybe next year. We also understand that in the fall, there can be varying temperatures, and oftentimes we will check our digital source and figure out what the weather report is and how to dress appropriately for it, whether we need a jacket or whether we don't, or whether we should turn the heat on because it's not going to get above 65 degrees today, and we don't want to be cold. So we don't hurt. We don't depend on somebody else to come in, turn our thermostat up so we can have heat. It's just common sense, and we understand how to do that. But you know when disaster strikes? If you don't understand what to do, how your body works, what your body needs, you're gonna be in big trouble. And already this year, there have been 11 natural disasters. So it isn't something I'm just plucking from the sky. It is a fact that these things happen. Look at California, for example. It is a firestorm. People are just fleeing their homes. And if they're lucky, they have what's called a go bag. In other words, this is uh, maybe a backpack that has some food, some water, some uh, medical supplies, uh, uh, an emergency first aid kit, because they know that this is something that happens. How about in Louisiana, they're flooding. Those people have to leave their homes. They should have a go bag. Now, I'm not the expert on preparedness by any stretch of the imagination, but I do have a lot of common sense. I do know a lot about natural healing, and there are things that I understand on how the body works and what it needs. So I'm going to just share a few things with you today and hopefully spark your interest in looking at what you can do, what you have control over, what amount of energy you want to put into being prepared for disaster. If this year has shown us anything, it has shown us the element of surprise. Who would have believed that we would be in the economic situation that we're in right now with 50% of the people have lost their jobs or are looking at um, a, a slowed up version of their job. So I wanna thank you for joining me today. I hope that you like this video and you share it with other people and that you give me a thumbs up and a comment. I love to read the comments. So <clears throat> when they say we have basically very little control over circumstances, I'm talking about like weather um, and other things. Yeah, things happen. And it isn't so much about being prepared as it is having the attitude of preparedness. Because if you don't, you're the one that's going to be running around like a chicken with their head cut off because you don't know what to do. Well. Ralph Waldo Emerson had an essay. Now it's a huge, huge essay. This is just a short part of 
in the essay, which I thought was appropriate. It says, there are the voices which we hear in solitude, but they grow faint and inaudible as we enter into the world. Society everywhere is in conspiracy against the manhood of every one of its members. Does that make you feel good? You know, there's people talk about conspiracy theories and how this COVID thing started and was there really a pandemic or was it a pandemic? There are people that are profiting from the bad support that we're getting. Society is a joint stock company in which the members agree for the better securing of his bread to each shareholder to surrender the liberty and culture of the eater. So I feel that our liberty has been greatly harmed by uh, mandating different things, uh, how many people can go to church, uh, and how you can practice your own faith. Uh, in California, one member in a church is too many. It's ludicrous. This whole state is in need of prayer and the limiting people in a, a church, whereas in a crowd of mob uh, situation, it's okay. It doesn't make sense to me. We have to rely on common sense, just as you rely on looking outside and seeing snow, you're not gonna walk barefoot outside. So virtue in most request is conformity. And what are they telling us to do? You need to do this, you need to do that. It has nothing to do with law. Law doesn't enter into it. These are mandates, mandates are not law. What they want you to do is comply. They want you to get used to listening to their voice and telling you what to do. Even though in your head, there's common sense that says, this doesn't make sense to me. So self-reliance is its aversion. It loves not realities and creators, but names and customs. And so what that means is rely on yourself and those you can trust because government is going to rush in to help you. What holds most people back from speaking the truth in their head is fear. Fear of being criticized. Fear of looking ridiculous. Fear of standing out and not conforming. Fear of losing one's position. It takes bravery to overcome fear, and it takes faith in your conviction. Most of the time when you voice your opinion with conviction, people respect your view. They think, well, you know, here's somebody that might have something. But if you go timidly forward and say, well, you know, maybe this, nobody's going to pay attention to you. Even if people don't know what they're talking about, they're going to say it with conviction. Look at Dr. Fauci. He took a model that was so inaccurate but because of his conviction. The country is now in an economic decline like the Great Depression. So we have the right to our convictions. It is our freedom of speech and it is a God-given right. And you may not agree with me, and you know what, that's okay. I understand, because we draw our convictions from that which we get information. And unfortunately, the media is playing into the hands of the evil people. So we could lay blame, but blame is when you won't take responsibility for your part in the situation, how you feel and what you do about the situation. So I love this little thing it was on Facebook a while back. Meet the person responsible for your choices, your grades, your success, your words, your actions, and these are mirrors. And I might add your health because in general, we are responsible for our health. 
we have to take take steps to be prepared. And the coming season is flu season. It's been flu season for a long, long time. Not the COVID type, regular flu season. It's allergy season. A lot of people don't uh, tolerate mold and the leaves drying up um, creates mold. And then the mold spores fly through the air and they have allergies. Well, a lot of times that's because they have uh, an imbalanced gut. But it isn't COVID. It's the allergies, it's flu, it's other things that we need to look into and get prepared. If you aren't happy with life, it's up to you to change it. The attitude of SODDI, some other dude did it, gets you nowhere. If you don't like your life, change it. Don't wait for others to do it. Don't blame other people, stomp around and say, oh, look at me, poor me. Oh, I've been so offended. Get off your butt and do something about it. Now, I love the little story about two little boys. And the first little boy opens the door and there's nothing but manure in this storage room. And he runs back and cries and says, somebody stole my pony. The other boy comes in, he opens the door and he sees the manure and he says, With so much manure, there's got to be a pony in here. So what attitude are you going to take? Are you going to go cry and complain to other people because life has dished out a horrible situation and you feel you have no control? Or are you going to look at the situation and say, what can I do about this? How can I make it better? Where's the positive in this? I can't wait to see what happens next. Some of the things that you absolutely need in a disaster or in an economic decline where you have no job are not necessarily food. Yes, we may not want to go three or four hours without food, but what we can't do is go three or four hours without water. Our body needs water. Water is far more critical to survival than food. Even slight dehydration adversely affects your physiology and your psychology. So you can get where you are if you don't drink enough water. And it really depends on how hot it is in the atmosphere with which you are. Because if you're in a cooler climate, water is not going to evaporate out of your body as quickly as if you're in 90 or 100 degree temperatures. So when you're Thinking about storing water, you want to think about at least one gallon per person in the family for usually a week. That's really what you want to look at. So you do the multiplication and go and start adding to your supply of gallons. Don't go buy these four ounce bottles of water. That's a waste gallons or two gallons or five gallons of water and st store it in a place where it's cool. And in a minimum, you want to do it three days. So that's where you can start. It's a three-day supply. You know, here in the Midwest, in Michigan, we have all four seasons and I love looking forward to it. Oh, we may have the occasional tornado, but we don't have to worry about floods and hurricanes and um, all of the fires and smoke and all the things that um, poor Californians have to pay attention to. <clears throat> so you want to store water. And if you are in a pinch and you don't have clean water, what you can do is you can add things like silver. Silver has purified water for centuries. Um, you can read up in, uh, how much 
leftover, I used to put a silver dollar in the bottom of a jug of water back in the times of Christ. So they knew about water purification back then, but now there's no silver coins basically <laughs> anymore. So, um, so you don't want to depend on that. But there is ionic silver and uh, nano silver. Now, nano silver is a much easier silver to work with because uh, it's such a small particle that it can easily go through the water and uh, clean up any particulate. Hydrogen peroxide is another great uh, cleaner. Even liquid iodine, iodorol, you can look into uh, cleaning your water with iodine, um, even bleach. Now, when you boil water, um, you sometimes are just condensing some of the heavy mat uh, metals that are in the water and the pesticides. A lot of that doesn't evaporate out, and so, um, Boiling water may kill pathogens, um, but it doesn't get rid of um, heavy metals or uh, chemicals. So think of water purification methods that don't require electricity. There's a great filter out there, purifier called a Berkey filter, and you can look into that. It's just, um, you can take lake water and purify it. So it's one of the things my husband and I have invested in um because we do live on a lake and well during the winter time we've been known to have to uh chop up the lake bring up water wash the toilet so we um we are accustomed to that so now food storage you know i i love canning food this is not my cupboard it's, first of all i would not have juice on my shelf i might have some canned goods but i definitely would have home canned goods uh, chicken, cooked um, uh, cans of chicken, tuna fish, those type of things are very sensible. Try to get the pop-off lid because you may be in a hurry. Um, uh, learn about storage bins, keep critters away, food safe things, uh, containers. We have um, buckets that have a screw top that you can just wind off um, and store and easily get to. Learn about different things. There is a, a website called marysnest.com. She's got some great free uh, prepper pantry videos that you should look into. Um, I'll link to them um, in the description below. But uh, you want to store the food away from light, heat, cold, moisture, and excess oxygen. There are silicone bags that you can put in that are um, the wrapper is food safe that you can put in dehydrated foods and different things <clears throat> learn the difference between oxygen absorbers and silicone packs because um, some foods you want to put one type thing in and some foods you want to put the oxygen absorber in it keep it fresh now we're talking about long-term storage uh, obviously, if you're thinking about two or three weeks storage, which is a great idea to start with, because you know um, what this year has taught us, that you can lose your job like that. And um, being prepared helps to keep the stress levels down. Um, so I hope that you're getting some uh, advantage out of these videos and that you're sharing them. If you have any particular questions that you feel are personal, email me, Dr. Mary at bornforhealth.com, and um, I, I'll do my best to send you some resources or help in one way or another. I have a lot of different resources that um, I have referred to in these videos. So start with uh, an herbal first aid kit. I did a whole video on preparing a travel aid kit. Now that, this is, uh, to me, I won't go anywhere without it. I actually have a small kit in my car um, that I take with me. I'm gonna be adding a few things to it, like a, a blanket, um, um, several different things. Um, this 
is uh, just a, you can use any kind of uh, zipper, a little purse. Uh, you can use one of those old panty packs, whatever, uh, to put your things in. But a travel kit is really, really important. Uh, if you don't have a book on preparedness, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, even uh, the official Boy Scout handbook is a great guide. Tells you how to address wounds. It, um, you know, what to do in emergencies. It even has CPR training. It has a, a lot of different things in it that um, uh, it can uh, help you identify some uh, what we consider weeds that are forage foods that if you're um, out somewhere that you you can pick up. Uh, you know, dandelion leaves are really a wonderful source of iron and uh, greens, chlorophyll. So there's a lot of food out there that you should never have to starve if you're in a place where there's something is growing. So look for that video. I'll link for uh, link the travel video in the description below. I've taught classes on how to do salves and tinctures and different things for um, bug bites and um, a, a whole plethora of things that you can take care of in an emergency that you don't have to wait for somebody to come. And you know, diarrhea, bleeding, burns, cuts, bumps, stings, poisons, charcoal. If you don't have um, activated charcoal in your medicine chest, you need to go and get that right away because that's the first thing that they're going to do when you get to a hospital is administer charcoal because it adsorbs toxins and poisons and sends them out the system. Now, if you've been dealing with the poison for a long term, you might need to get an enema bag and don't be scared of that. It's really no big deal. Um, read some instructions on how to do that, but that will stop a fever. I, it will get rid of toxins and it will stabilize the bowel so you don't have diarrhea. Uh, you can put a little lemon juice in it and um, what that does is it corrects the pH in the bowel. And that's the reason why you've got the diarrhea is because number one, you got an irritation. Number two, you've got an imbalance of pH and the body is just trying to do its best to um, get back into balance. So watch some videos on preparedness. Spend about a half hour, a, a, if you can, a day. If otherwise, you know what you can um, put together and look at maybe um, Mary's Nest is a great place to start because she's so organized about it. And I've learned so much from, from her videos. So, you know, figure out what you want or don't want to do uh, and be okay with taking responsibility for yourself and whatever other family members that you want to help. You know, others may be depending on you and it can be as simple as adding to your first aid kit some charcoal or silver um, and getting a primer that will uh, help you with, uh, that you can easily look up things and get comfortable um, during times of emergencies so that you can be the people, the person that other people count on. You can be the level head. And uh, as Emerson said, if you don't express your ideas, develop your talent, take action, do what is needed, you may never know what you're capable of. I, you know, a lot of times I've been pushed and shoved into a certain area and thought, oh, I can't do that, I can't do that. And then I, I correct my thinking and I think, well, what can I do? What part of this can I do? And before I know it, I've done it. It's amazing. And it makes you feel so good about yourself. So keep focusing on gratitude and uh, don't forget to email me with any questions that you may have. Um, be thankful for all the God's gifts all around you and the joy in this world and the loved ones that care about you. 
flowers and all the gifts. Be grateful. That's a huge thing in keeping your attitude healthy is being grateful and not blaming or being upset about things and you can't do anything about. Learn what you can do about and do it. So thank you for viewing. Until next time, this is Dr. Mary for the Health of It.